स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so good morning everyone so in this lecture i am going to talk about the other set of constraints namely the holonomic constraint problems as well as the non holonomic constraint problems okay so so far we have looked at uh, functional optimization subject to the isoperimetric constraints so in this lecture i am going to introduce the two other different types of constraint namely the holonomic or the algebraic constraints and the non holonomic constraints or the differential constraints so let us quickly look at uh, well let me call this constraint as the category a and this constraint as my category b okay so so in the case of holonomic as i just said these are algebraic constraints algebraic constraints i see that the constraints will be of the form g of t comma q bar equal to 0 so these are all algebraic relations between the various uh, between the various components of q q bar and t where q bar in general is a vector right okay so i see that n is greater than equal to 2 okay so when so so in this case and in the non let me just also briefly state what are the non holonomic constraints so the non holonomic or differential differential constraints are those where we have the constraints of the following form okay so so let me so these are my a and this let me call this relation as 1 and i call this relation as 2 for later reference okay so so how to solve problems with constraints of the type 1 so let me just briefly discuss on that role first okay so suppose so let us set up the problem in for case a so suppose i have a functional so let j let j be a functional let j be a functional functional of the form let j be a functional of the form uh, j of q bar is equal to integral from t0 to t1 of l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot dt right and subject to subject to uh, my boundary conditions q of t0 is q0 and q of t1 is q1 right and uh, so so these are my boundary conditions okay now further for consistency purposes uh, we must have these boundary conditions the uh, the constraint also should satisfy the boundary condition otherwise we will run into some trouble so so we we must have a prior assumption for consistency purpose that g at t comma q bar not must be equal to g at t comma q bar 1 which is equal to 0 for consistency purpose right and also also we assume we are dealing with normal problems we assume that grad of g which is given by del g del q1 here we are dealing with let us say two variable problems comma del g 
del q2 is non zero so here i am dealing with let us say in in r2 right for higher orders then there will be more components in this expression okay so uh, so 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 for extremals so these conditions are for extremals q bar uh, q bar in the interval in the interval uh, t0 to t1 so q bar in the interval t0 to to t1 okay so so then well intuitively the it seems that the this class of problems is relatively simple to solve in fact this is not even a new set of problems we are discussing it seems intuitively why because notice that the notice the constraint so if we look at this constraint possibly we could use the constraint to solve one variable q let's say q1 with respect to the other variable q2 and then uh, replace this constraint problem with the corresponding unconstrained problem of one variable so rather than solving a constrained optimization problem with two variables q1 and q2 let's say in 2d we could solve the unconstrained problem with respect to q1 if we could solve q1 as a function of q2 using the constraint like we we mentioned briefly in the case of finite dimensional calculus but again we will see that we run into some problems right so what i just said is the following so suppose uh, suppose again we are talking about normal problems so suppose for normal problems suppose normal problems uh, let uh, so suppose well i need to i need to also uh, also uh, number this result let me call this as 3 right so suppose for normal problems uh, so 3 implies so 3 implies that the constraint the 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 holonomic constraint constraint 1 can be used can be used to solve for for one one q case the holonomic constraint can be used to solve for one q case then we could uh, we could possibly as i just said we could possibly change the unconstrained problem into a sorry and a constrained problem into an unconstrained optimization problem the standard lagrange multiplier right so which means it seems intuitively it seems that so two so an n variable an n variable constrained problem constrained problem to be reduced to reduced to n minus 1 variable unconstrained problem unconstrained problem right it seems that is possible and many times it's 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 possible but many times it not so it may it may or may not work right as we have seen a similar several similar scenarios in finite dimensional calculus and uh, and for isoperimetric problem also well uh, not the case of isoperimetric problem but in the case of finite dimensional calculus we saw that it may or may not work so so then what is what is the uh, what is the alternative out of it so the alternative to look at the alternative let us consider the following suppose suppose i look at a perturbation in the extremal so suppose q bar hat is an allowable an allowable variation suppose q bar hat is an allowable variation where each of the components q bar q hat k is c2 of t0 t1 where my q bar hat of t0 is 
q naught bar and q bar hat of t 1 is q 1 bar. right? So, these are my boundary condition and further I have that the constraint is also satisfied. This constraint is also satisfied for these. So, so when I say allowable variations, these are the set of uh, conditions that q bar hat must satisfy. Okay. So, when I say when I say that j is a stationary or q is an extremal of j stationary at q bar. So, then it implies that the necessary condition for this statement is as follows. right? So, the necessary condition the necessary condition for extremal is that j of q bar hat minus j of q bar will be will be 0 or at most of order epsilon square. right? So, only the higher order terms survive the lower order terms the lower order with respect to epsilon terms they vanish. So, then in that case we we are guaranteed we are uh, we get necessarily get the extremal. Okay? And we saw that we saw that let me call this statement as 1 we saw that this is true if this following integral constraints are is satisfied. We get that this is also equal to uh, partial partial q 1 of L where where j is integral L d t. Right? So, partial partial q 1 of L minus d d d d x of partial partial q 1 dot of L times the first perturbation the perturbation in the first component eta 1 plus partial partial q 2 of L minus the derivative d d x of partial partial q 2 dot of L times eta 2 of d t. Okay? So, so, this is equal to 0. So, having said that q bar is an extremal, this is equivalent to saying that this integral constraint is satisfied. Okay, so, then we need uh, uh, we need uh, few other assumptions before we uh, move ahead. Since, since I have that q bar is an extremal, and it is fixed. So, q bar is fixed right? and I am also assuming that the gradient. So, so, so since means that I am assuming right. So, I am assuming and also that the gradient of the constraint is non-zero right uh, over the interval over the parameter interval from t 0 to t 1. We assume uh, so, this means without loss of generality, we can assume that let us say one of the components is non-zero. Right? We can assume that del g del well del g del q 2 is non-zero. We could assume the otherwise or we could also assume that both components are non-zero. Right? So, let me let me call this assumption as star. Okay. So, so since, since the constraint is satisfied, since I have that g of t comma q bar is 0, the constraint is satisfied, I have that the derivative of g with respect to epsilon. Uh, well, since this constraint is 0, it means that the derivative of this constraint, uh, the, the constraint at the perturbed value of q is must also be 0 at the critical point which means that the derivative with respect to epsilon of g of t comma q bar hat at the perturbed value set at epsilon equal to 0 that is at the critical point must also be equal to 0. But this quantity here is nothing but uh, is nothing but the following. So, this is coming via the chain rule. 
So, del g del q 1 times eta 1. Well, uh, there is absolutely nothing new in this exercise. We have done it uh, in fact more than once uh, to come up at as uh, to come out with the necessary condition for the extremal. Once in the finite dimensional calculus and in the other time when we were discussing the isoperimetric constraint. So, we are doing a similar exercise for non holonomic constraint. So, now this is equal to the following. So, del g del q 2 times eta 2. Okay. From here, from here I get that eta 2 is equal to negative del g del q 1 divided by del g del q 2 of eta eta 1. Right. So, so let me call this, let me call this as double star. Right. Let me call this as double star. We are going to use this later when, when we describe the, the necessary condition. Now, then, then let me uh, let me also state another fact. So, so recall, recall I have the functional j of y, j of not y but j of q bar equal to integral l dt, right? So this was my functional. So, here, here we have assumed, we have assumed that L is smooth, we have assumed that, that L is smooth, L is smooth function, right. Therefore, which implies that for any smooth extremal, any smooth extremal Q, smooth uh, smooth q bar, I must have, I must have that uh, this quantity e 2 of l, which is this, this left hand side of the Euler Lagrange, this quantity q 2 minus partial l, well this is q 2 dot minus partial l partial q 2, this is also equal to, well this is also equal to, well, this is also continuous, right. So, this is also continuous function of the parameter t, right, because if L is, uh, L is smooth and it has derivatives up to second order, I must have that this operator acting on L must also produce a smooth function of t, right. So, so I can say that now, so further, so further we can, we know that del g del q 2 is also continuous function of t, right. We can further assume that del g del q 2 is a continuous function of t. So, both are continuous functions of t, which means that we can we can express one continuous function as a as in the form of the other continuous function right both are continuous functions so the ratio of the two continuous function will also be a continuous function right so what i have said is the following since both of them are continuous functions uh, so so this means that there exists there exists a non zero continuous continuous function function lambda of t such that such that my e 2 one continuous function can be expressed in terms of the other continuous function using this using this second function. Right now I have just used a simple continuity argument to arrive at a relation. So, let me so, expanding this, expanding this we see that this is, so r this means that d d x of del l del q dot minus the partial l partial q 2 is equal to lambda times del g del q 2. Let me call this, uh, let us see what, what numbering notation we have used. So, so we have called this result as 1. So, let me call this result as 2, 
Okay. So, moving ahead, if we, we recall 1 now, so recalling our result 1, we see that the constraint that we have, so recalling 1 and 2 both, right? Well, I do not need 2, but I need this condition, I need double star this condition. Okay. So, recalling 1 and double star, I see that my integral constraint becomes the following, it becomes it becomes del L del Q 1 minus d d t of del del Q 1 dot of L times eta 1 minus lambda t del G del Q 2 times eta 2, right. So, so all I have done is replace, so I have used 1 and 2 as well as star. So, so this becomes, so eta 2 is nothing but, but replace, so now I am going to replace this perturbation eta 2 using, using my relation double star to arrive at a quantity which is in which I can take out this perturbation eta 1. Okay. So, from here I see that I get the following condition that I get that this is T 0 to T 1 del L del Q 1 minus d d t of del L del Q 1 dot plus lambda of T del G del Q 1 right and then times eta 1 this is equal to well d x this is set equal to 0. So, this is eta 2 is replaced by by the relation between eta 2 and eta 1 to come at this particular integral constraint and again using a version of lemma 2 discussed in lecture 2 I come to the point where I have the Euler Lagrange equation for L with the holonomic constraint G for the component Q 1. I come at the following that I get del L del Q 1, del L del Q 1, right. So, del L del Q 1 minus d d t of del L del Q 1 dot plus lambda del G del Q 1, this is equal to 0. Now, notice, notice that from 2 we have an identical e equal constraint for the component Q 2. Well, if we take the minus on both sides, then the relation becomes identical to this relation that we describe 3. So, let me call this 3. So, 2 and 3 are identical, but with component Q 2 replaced with Q 1. So, I am ready to describe my Euler Lagrange necessary condition in this situation. So, in so in compact form, in compact form, my necessary condition is as follows. I must have that d d t of del q k dot minus del q k of f must be equal to 0 for k equal to 1 comma 2 and my f is equal to f minus, well we do not have an f here, but we have an l. So, l minus lambda g, where l is the integrand of the functional and g is the holonomic constraint. Okay. So, let me call this result by 4 and also give also give another reference to all the students where a proper proof based on geometry is provided geometry. Okay. So, so, students are asked to also refer this particular reference to look at a more detailed geometry base based proof for this uh, situation of 
functional optimization with holonomic constraints. So, the author is Jacinta and Hildebrand. So, we need to students are requested to refer to this particular reference which is a book. So, the book's name is Calculus of Variations part 1, uh, part 1 the Lagrangian formulation, Lagrangian formalism and published by Springer in 96. So, so this is a useful reference for geometry based proof of these class of problems that I have just shown. Okay. For the Lagrange multiplier method for with holonomic constraints. Okay. Constraint. Okay. So, so I am going to end my discussion on holonomic constraints by giving by summarizing my entire discussion in the form of a theorem and also providing some examples to highlight how this uh, Euler Lagrange necessary condition is utilized. So, the theorem is as follows this is now theorem number 12. I see that suppose, suppose that I am given q bar is q 1 comma q 2 q bar is q 1 comma q 2 which is a smooth extremal which is a smooth extremal extremal for the functional smooth extremal for the functional j subject to subject to the holonomic constraint constraint given by g of t comma q bar equal to 0 and and the gradient of g of t comma q bar not 0 for for t in t 0 to t 1. So, so suppose we have this setup then there exists there then there exists a function a real valued function there exists a function lambda of t lambda of t such that such that q bar the extremal satisfies satisfies our relation 4 the relation that I have. So, this is the relation I am talking. So, the relation 4 which is the Euler Lagrange necessary condition. Okay. And then let us look at some examples in this category. So, the example today that I have is as follows. So, I need to extremize I need to extremize j of q bar which is integral from 0 to pi by 2 of mod q bar uh, q bar dot square plus 1 d t subject to uh, subject to g of t comma q bar which is given by this relation mod q bar square minus 1 is equal to 0. So, this is a case of a constraint optimization subject to holonomic constraint. Okay. And further with my boundary conditions as follows, I have a q bar at 0 is 1 comma 0 and q bar at pi by 2 is 0 comma 1. So, this is a problem with two variables. So, again we look at the way to optimize is we directly set up our 
uh, Euler Lagrange equation and so, so what we have is so to set up the Euler Lagrange notice that my functional for Euler Lagrange now is L minus lambda t of g and this becomes square root mod mod q bar dot square plus 1 minus lambda t of of q bar square minus 1 right so this is my this is my my uh, my function for which we need to apply the Euler Lagrange operator. So, the Euler Lagrange the EL equations are so d d t of q 1 dot divided by mod q bar dot square plus 1. So, I am directly applying my Euler Lagrange equation and writing down the final expression. So, these are my expression when I differentiate with respect to q 1, I get the following expression times 2, this is equal to 0 and the second that is the derivative with respect to q 2, I get the following expression q 2 dot divided by mod q dot square plus 1 minus 2 lambda of t q 2 this is equal to 0. So, I call this expression as a and we see that I call this expression as a. Okay. So, now we have to solve the system of equation to solve the system of equation we see that. So, also we all have the constraint we have the constraint g of t comma q bar which is mod q bar square minus 1 which is also equal to 0. right? So, we see that my q my extremal is q is such that the square of its uh, the square of its uh, of its norm uh, will give me the square of its absolute value will give me 1. So, from here I can assume I can assume that q 1 and q 2 are lying on a unit circle. right? So, the moment we assume that we directly satisfy the constraint. right? So, we, we need not worry about the constraint now. So, so instead of two variables q 1 and q 2 now we have just one variable phi to solve for. right? And of course, we have the second variable lambda of t the second functional variable. So, we have two unknowns phi and lambda and we have two equations which are given by a. So, we directly substitute we directly substitute these two quantities in A and we see that well we see that we get the following well of course, if q 1 is cos of phi of t I get that q 1 dot is minus sin phi times phi dot and q 2. So, if q 2 is sin of phi then q 2 dot is cos of phi times phi dot. right? So, what I get is from here I see that the absolute value of q bar dot square will give me nothing but phi dot square right? squaring and adding these two quantities and then from A the set of relations from A gives me the following set of equations. So, d d t of the first relation gives me d d t of phi dot sin phi divided by square root phi dot square plus 1 plus 2 lambda t cos phi of t is equal to 0 and then d d t of, of phi dot cos of phi divided by phi dot square plus 1 minus 2 lambda t sin of phi of t this is also equal to 0. So, after plugging in 
values of q and q bar and q bar dot is what we get. So, further we take the second the first derivative and well uh, rather than taking these necessary derivative notice that if we multiply if we multiply this first quantity by sin of phi and multiply the second relation by by cos of phi right and we add these two relations we are going to get the condition that the that sin of phi times d d t of the first quantity phi dot sin phi divided by square root of phi dot square plus 1 plus cos of phi d d t of phi dot cos of phi divided by square root of phi dot square plus 1 this is also equal to 0 right so we have we have eliminated one unknown eliminate did lambda of t by doing that now further we can see that this whole quantity is nothing but the derivative of the following quantity the derivative of phi dot by phi dot square plus 1 right so this whole quantity is nothing but the derivative and this is set equal to 0 on the right hand side right so students can check so this needs to be checked that this is indeed true right and which means from here i can directly integrate this relation once to come to the point that phi dot divided by phi dot square plus 1 is equal to a constant okay constant or in other words i see that phi dot is also a constant if this if this expression is a constant then phi dot will be another set of constant okay so the conclusion is that phi dot is equal to c naught which is a constant or phi of t the angle uh, the angle that or the parameter that or the substitution the substituting function phi of t is c naught t plus c 1. So, it is a linear relation in t. So, now so now my my variable q 1 of t is cos of of c naught t plus c 1 and my q 2 of t is sin of c naught t plus c 2 right. So, now we have all we have to do is to eliminate c naught and c 1, but we have set. So, we have two boundary conditions present. So, my boundary conditions are my q bar of 0 is 1 comma 0 and from here I can immediately see. So, it gives me that q 1 at 0 is 1 and q, q 2 at 0 is 0. From here I can see that c 1 will come out to be 2 n pi right and further I, I have that the other set of boundary condition q bar at 1 q bar at 1 at 1 but the other value pi by 2 the upper limit of the integral is 0 comma 1. From here I see that c naught comes out to be uh, an integer 4 m plus 1 where m is an integer right it could be positive or negative. Okay. Now, also we know that we know that we know that t is from 0 to pi by 2. Why? Because notice notice well notice these limits here 0, 0 and pi by 2. So, the limits of t is from 0 to pi by 2. Okay? So, t is from 0 to pi by 2 which which tells us that which tells us that that uh, that it is only possible it is only possible when c 1 is 0 or n is 0 and c naught is 1 right. So, t can re remain in the first quadrant only when c 1 is 0 and c naught is 1 right. 
and in that case in that case my q 1 of t is cos of t and my q 2 of t is sin of t. So, those are my parametric representation of the function and that completes the discussion that saying that this function this extremal lies on the rim of a unit circle. Note well we did not even check whether the, the problem was normal or abnormal, but note that if we were to calculate the gradient of g, the gradient of g is the derivative of g with respect to with respect to q 1 and the derivative of g with respect to q 2, you will see that now since we have evaluated q 1 and q 2, it comes out to be sin t cos t. Okay, and this is certainly not 0 for all t in the interval 0 to pi by 2 that we are considering. Okay. Okay. So, which means, which means that we are working with a normal uh, problem in this case. Okay. 